In this tutorial, I will show you in detail how to work with relationships in a where I am. Relationships are a very important concept and its implementation in a where I am is simple and unique. A where I am encourages you not to think in database terms when defining relationships. There is no need to define IDs or primary and foreign keys. Instead, think about establishing relationships between concepts represented by business objects. For example, let's say that we are designing an internet banking application. It's quite obvious that the central concepts of this application are a customer business object and an account business object. How are these objects related? Well, a customer can have one or more accounts, so a customer is definitely related to multiple accounts. An account usually belongs to a particular customer only, unless joint accounts are allowed. Let's assume for now that joint accounts are not allowed, so an account object is related to a single customer only. That's all we need to know. A customer is related to multiple accounts, and an account is related to a single customer. I will now show you how to define these relationships in a where I am. We start with defining both objects that we have been talking about, customer and account. Let's define our customer and define some simple attributes for it. For example, let's define name. and date of birth. Now let's define an account object with some of its attributes, such as for example balance and state. Now let's define a relationship between a customer and account. To do this, we will define a new attribute in the customer object called accounts. Note that all objects that we define automatically appear in the list of available types for the attribute. The type of an attribute that represents a relationship must always be chosen from the list of existing objects. In this case, we choose account. Because a customer can have multiple accounts, we tick the multiple allowed checkbox. Whether this checkbox is ticked or not is very important. We will ignore other options for now. Let's now look at the presentation options of the accounts attribute on the customer. We can see that by default, a where I am shows accounts of the customer as the table of items. So the user will be able to see accounts related to the customer. I will, this, I will explain this in more details later. For now, I will just add a couple of, op of operations to our table. The Add New Reference operation will allow the user to create a new account on the fly and automatically associate it with the customer. The Add operation will allow the user to select from a list of existing accounts and associate selected accounts with the customer. I will explain how these work in more detail a little later. This is literally all we have to do to relate customers with account. 
Let's see now how this looks in the browser. So I log into the browser and see the default screen of the application. I will then create a particular customer. Note that the form of the customer already includes a table of related accounts. Since we are creating a new customer, no accounts are related to this customer yet. But notice that our aim automatically added the Add New button to allow us to relate a particular customer to, a, to particular accounts. At the moment, we do not have any existing accounts, but the Add New button allows us to create one on the fly and automatically associate it with the customer that we are creating. Let's do this. When I press Add New, where I am automatically pops up the form of the account object. I will create some account and click Create. I will add another one. Notice that the new accounts are immediately displayed in the table of associated accounts. Let's now create our customer. The form is blanked out so that we can create another customer. Since we now have some existing accounts, I can show you how the Add button works. It just allows users to select from some existing instances and associate these instances with the object. When I click Add, where I am shows the two instances of the account that we have created and associated with the previous customer. It doesn't make sense to associate these two instances with another customer, because accounts belong to their particular customer and no one else. In fact, it's even better in this particular case not to allow users to select from existing accounts. So we should better remove the add operation from our table. Let's now go back to the customer I have created. As you can see, its two associated accounts are shown in the table on the form. WhereAim automatically adds the edit operation that lets you navigate to the form of any related object, which is what I do here. Note that we have only associated a custom object with an account object, but so far we haven't associated an, an account object with the customer. And therefore, the account object does not know the customer that it belongs to. There is nothing on the form of the account object to indicate which customer it belongs to. Let's now associate the account object with its customer. To do this, I open the accounts attribute of the customer object and select the Create Radio button to create a matching attribute. The matching attribute will be created on the account object and will relate the account to the customer. I give the name to this matching attribute. Since this is the name of the attribute in the account object, I will call it customer to indicate that the account relates to its customer. If I now go to the account object, I will see the new customer attribute there, a where I am automatically created one for me. By default, a where I am created it as multiple allowed. But we will untick this checkbox because an account can only belong to one customer. So we have now associated the custom object to the account object and the account object to the custom object. The relationship is represented by the accounts attribute on the customer object and the matching customer attribute 
on the account object. In fact, I could have and should have created the matching attribute right from the start. However, not all relationships need matching attributes and I just wanted to show you how relationships work without matching attributes. Let's now go back to the browser and see how a matching relationship works. I will again create a new customer and then create a new associated account for her. I will then find this customer and I can see the associated account. I will navigate to this account and now as you can see the form of the account object shows an associated customer. Where I am automatically creates all these relationships. A customer knows about its accounts and an account knows about its customer. That's all really. The only other thing you may need to know about relationships is parent-child relationships. By default, relationships are created as peer relationships. This means that both objects can exist independently of each other, even though they can be related they can exist on their own without their related object. With parent-child relationship, a child object cannot exist without its related parent object. That is, it does not make sense to have child object on its own without its parent. For example, in our case, we could make the account object a child of the customer. If an account always belongs to one customer, it doesn't make sense to have an account on its own without an associated customer. Note that with parent-child relationships, whenever a parent is deleted, a where I am automatically deletes all child instances associated with the parent, because if the parent is gone, children cannot exist on their own. Let's see now in more detail how relationships are shown on object forms. Let's open the accounts attribute of the customer object again and click on the presentation button. The drop down here indicates different representations in which relationships can be shown on forms. The default representation is table of items, where related instances are shown using a table or grid, like the one we saw for related accounts of the customer. The grid displays one or more attributes of the related object as columns. You can choose which attributes of the related objects will be shown on the grid. Here there are options to sort related records, filter them, perform operations, edit them in line, and many others. There are also other forms of representing multiple relationships, such as checkbox lists, Swap select, multi select drop down, charts, custom queries, and trees. Checkbox lists, multi select drop down, and swap selects can be used when all possible choices can be shown on one screen so that the user can select related instances from a list of possible choices. These options should only be used when a list of possible choices is not overly large. With checkbox lists, the user selects related instances by ticking checkboxes next to an instance of the related object. With the swap select, the user moves selected instances from one list box to another one. With the multi-select drop-down, the user selects related instances from a drop-down of all possible instances.
In all these cases, you can control how related objects are represented on screen and which attributes of the related objects are shown for each instance. We will talk more about charts, trees and custom presentations in other tutorials. For single references, those references for which multiple allowed checkbox is unticked, the presentation options are slightly different. I will open the custom attribute of the account object and show you. You can still show a single related instance as a table, but you can also represent a related instance as a drop-down list. At runtime, a variable will automatically populate the drop-down list with all possible choices, so that the user can select the one he wants. For example, if we wanted to select a customer when creating an account, we can do so by representing a customer as, dropped, as a drop-down. Here we can also select which attributes will be shown, usually just one. We can specify whether all possible instances will be fetched at once or where I am will automatically fetch instances matching what the user has typed. We can sort entries in the drop-down filter them, and so on. Let's see how it looks in the browser. I will create an account object this time. As you can see, I can now select from a list of customers that we have so far in our system to select the one that I want to associate with the new account. Where I am automatically populates the drop-down with all possible choices.